Good morning, everybody. Happy Sensational Saturday. I am in stereo here. Let me unplug one of these because I can't look at myself multiple times. This is just getting ridiculous. All right. Happy Celebration Saturday today. How are you all doing? I hope you are having a magnificent day. If you are here, present yourself in the comments. Say hello. Let me know that you are here. Um, let me know where you're coming in from so that I can have it. Hold on. Let me get this off. There we go. Now we got that on mute. All right, so now I think I'm good to go. All right, so happy Sensational Saturday, Celebration Saturday. We're talking about dating after divorce and um, because it's the holidays. So you're out there, right? Aren't you out there? Like, I mean, even if you're not out there, you're out there. You are um, getting invitations to office parties. You're getting invitations to holiday parties. You're getting invitations. You're getting invitations to be out there. And so uh, if you're out there, it's an opportunity to meet people. Now, if you're newly divorced or semi-divorced or um, uh, maybe you've div you're divorced a long time and this is um, you know an opportunity for you to get out there, let's talk about that a little bit uh, because there's you got the whole gamut. So you got people who are separated in dating, which I always find as an awkward, personally speaking, like I know some people, so for example, I come from a long line of divorce. For those of you that don't know, parents are divorced, grandparents are divorced. Uh, my great grandmother was divorced. <laughs> like I, I come from a long line. So I've kind of watched this, the evolution of this over a lot of time. I don't have a lot of judgment around it, but I have more like best practices and recommendations because I think when you um, leave your previous relationship, if you're not healing and whole, all you're doing is picking up the, the trunk of crap and then depositing it in the new house. And then you got to work that out with new guy, new girl. And that sucks. It sucks for new guy, new girl. It sucks for you because the lens through which you're viewing the person that you're with through is from whatever hurt you're not over from old guy or old girl. And it's not fair to them. And you're really, it's not fair to you. You're cheating yourself of an opportunity to really have an awesome relationship with someone new because you're not over what happened to you in the past. And I am by no means saying everybody's got to have a completely clean blank slate. You're totally healed and open. There's nothing wrong with you. And you're like, you're perfect on an emotional continuum. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that if you know you have serious issues or you want to test to see if you have serious issues, make sure you're getting support, going to counseling, doing your own work, because the worst thing that can happen to you is you meet a really great guy and a really great girl. And they're like, no, because your crap is not my crap. And I don't want to deal with your crap. You're like not there yet. You're not open. You're not available. Uh, you have too much baggage from your past relationships. And I'm, I don't want to clean that up. I want to be with somebody who's already got their stuff together and is ready to, to really enjoy a relationship, not like work through some stuff. And that's not to say you won't be working through things in a relationship. You're always going to be working through things in a relationship, but it shouldn't be where you're starting from, you know, negative nine instead of, you know, positive, like five or six. I mean, if you look at on the continuum, I mean, I would say, look at it this way on a relationship continuum. You should at least be a seven or eight in terms of readiness, preparedness, emotionally available, physically available, mentally available. You should be somewhere around at least a seven. You could possibly do it as a six if you are getting support and dealing with your crap. If you're anything less than that, all you're doing is projecting onto the person your crap or working through your crap with the person. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying it's much harder. It's harder on you it's harder on them. And that kind of sucks for them, especially if you really want to have an excellent relationship, which I'm imagining if you're coming out of divorce separation, or you've been divorced for a long time, and you're finally saying like, I'm so ready for a relationship. And you're not going to really 
want to be in the mode where I'm so ready for a relationship, but I am really messed up and I know it. And so I'm just going to practice on some guy and just like come along and he's going to get the benefit of uh, me practicing with him. And hopefully he's okay with that. And um, see if we can get some light on the subject. All right. And hopefully he's okay with that. And, uh, you know, it, it goes well because likely it's, it, it doesn't always go well when you're practicing in that way with a person and um, you're not healed yourself. All right. So that's my little caveat speech. I would say on the continuum of one to 10, be at least a seven in terms of readiness, preparedness, your stuff. You it, And I would say a seven is I know what my stuff is and I'm working on it. And eight is I've worked on most of my stuff, like a good portion of it. I can identify it. I, I don't, I still get triggered, but when I get triggered, I own it. I know it. And if my partner points out a blind spot, I will take that into consideration, hear it, and I will work on it. Right. A nine is most of my stuff is like solid. Even when I get triggered, I catch it. I own it. And I'm off of it in like very short order. And I own it out loud to my partner. I can say, you know what? That's, you know, like I always tell you guys, uh, that's Ivy stuff. That's an Ivy thing. That's not a you thing. That's an Ivy thing. I completely own it. It's important to me. So let's, we're going to have to work through it because this is a standard or this is a requirement or I'm not past it yet and I'm still working on it. It's an old childhood wound. I get it. It's not you. It's totally me. And I'm working through it. That's like really owning it. 100%, no projection. You're telling him it's not about you. This is really about me. And I'm not going to lay that on you. And obviously a tennis, somebody who's really like Zen-like state of existence, they rarely get triggered. And when they do, it lasts very short order. And then they're, they're off of it. They're out of it. And their partner might not even notice it because they're really so good at knowing themselves and owning their relationship with themselves and owning what they do. They don't really have those kinds of issues uh, for the most part, not saying they're perfect, but they're pretty close to emotionally, their emotional intelligence is super high and there's very little projection or um, a lack of responsibility in the relationship from an emotional standpoint. They're not, they're not going to gaslight you. They're going to really listen. They're going to really hear you. If you say you hurt me, if you say, is they're going to really like, uh, let me look at that. And not like feel like I'm under attack and how dare you? Like they're not, they are people that typically, it's not that they don't have disagreements, they do, but they really do it in a very, very healthy way. So that's what I'm talking about. You gotta be between somewhere between seven and 10. If you're below that, do a little bit more work before you get out there. I only say that in service to you. Now, hey, you are free will and human being, you can do whatever you want to. I'm just saying that the relationships that seem to, to work the best post-marriage. The divorce rate is actually higher on, on the second round, statistically speaking, and even higher on the third round. So if we're divorced, which presumably many of you are, um, or even if you've had like a lot of breakups, if you're one of those serial monogamous people and you've had a lot of breakups in your life, the, 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 the baggage, the, the, the carnage, the bodies that you left behind you speak volumes about um, your ability to be in relationship with a person, right? Whether it's, I'm not picking whole people and that usually has to do with I'm not whole myself. Either way, if you've got a long wake of relationships that didn't work out behind you, that's the risk you run when you're not healed yourself is you just get into relationships and you're working out your stuff on these other people. It's not fair to them. And really, it's really not fair to you because you end up with, again, another dead body in your, in your past, in your wake, in your, in, in your midst, because you're not there yet. And I imagine some of these people you probably really, really loved and were really, really great. They were really I mean, you at some point, if, especially for serial monogamous, you saw yourself with this person. You were in it for a while because you saw yourself being able to be with this individual. And now that you are, um, you, you broke up, as you look back, you're like, I wonder why I picked that person. I don't understand. Or they weren't what I thought they were. 
or I wasn't ready. The best of us can really look at it and own what it was that they brought to the table that wasn't working. So think about that. If you're a person who's a serial monogamous, if you've been, and also if you've been divorced, you got to make sure your stuff is, as my father used to say, airtight like a frog's ass. The reason why is because you uh, don't want to get in and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. You just end up going through people in your life instead of having the relationship you really want. I mean, we're all here to be, many of us are here to be in communion with another human being. And you thought you were doing that in your marriage and it didn't work out. It's possible you can do it. You can find your person, but only or and only when you are healed yourself. And I'm not poo-pooing anybody that's gotten married and they've been married for a long time and they went through some stuff and they weren't ready, but they somehow managed to mend that and them and their husband. I'm, it, it can be done. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying it's a harder road to hoe. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying about that. There, are, it, it, How hard do you want to work at it? Right? And then the other risk you run is sometimes people get healed and then you realize this isn't the person for you. Like you pick a match for the you you are at that time, which is what we all do, right? But if that you has, a, if that version of yourself has a lot of issues, it's likely the person you picked is mirroring those same issues. And then as you get healed over time, they may or may not be joining you in that healing and then you're ahead of them or you are like, I don't do that anymore. And they're still there because that's where you were when you met them. And so then again, you met them as a level four, level six, you were projecting, you weren't over, you weren't emotionally available. You get your support, you get your help. And now you're like a solid eight, nine. And then you're looking back at this person going, yeah, this isn't what I want. And they're uninterested in moving forward and getting support and being healed and doing things differently. They don't want to move. They're very happy where they were, right? So I, I one of the questions I often ask my uh, clients is if nothing changed when they're in doubt, if nothing changed, you woke up and they were exactly the same person each and every day in this moment for the rest of your life, would you stay? Is this who you want? Like, it's a really good question because some people never change. Who, who they are is who you're with. You can't have an expectation that they evolve with you. You can, but they may not. It's their choice. And I think that's a lot of what we project onto people is that, well, we're in this together and he has to change or she has to change. And that's an ideal. And if you and your person have talked about that, and this is the relationship you're creating, chances are then you will evolve together. But that, again, that's a, those are people who are at seven or eight. They're healed. They're open. They're available. They acknowledge where they are. They want to get better. They are interested in creating, like combining, actually orchestrating, being engaged, loving the person. And they're healed enough that they can do that. So they're like, we're going to ride this till the wheels falls off. We're going to both evolve, grow, change, heal together. He's saying it, she's saying it. And so they move forward together. That's a conscious conversation, an adult, a grown up, a progressive, an emotionally intelligent conversation to have with people that you're dating. It's not one that people have very often. And that's because most of us, even without divorce, aren't at that seven, eight, nine level. We're still dealing with the issues that we never dealt with from our childhood, from our adolescence and dating, from our early dating life in our 20s, still dealing with it, never got over it. We get married and then we start working that out with our partner over time. And you can't, you can work with people if they choose to work with you. And if you've had the blessing and the good fortune of having that in a marriage, kudos to you, like, you know, snaps to you. But many of us, we don't get that blessing. We don't get it. You get in. You come with all your expectations. You come with your baggage. He comes with his baggage. And then you guys make each other wrong for who you are when you married the person the way they were. They are the way they are. Good luck getting them to change. You can't get people to change 
only if they want to. If you can get anybody to change if they want to change, it's really hard to get somebody to change if they don't want to change. In fact, it's impossible. You know, even people, they may do it once because they love you, but sustainable change, like they're never going to leave the toilet seat up. I'm just kidding about the toilet seat. I just wanted to use that as an example. That's pretty funny. Anyway, so that's what I have to say about dating after divorce. If you're embarking on that, make sure your healing, your emotional availability, your emotional intelligence, your ability to connect, you're open, you're somewhere seven to 10 uh, in terms of your own, like, and it's a, like, this is a subjective scale. I kind of gave you guys a range, but it's subjective. You're the one that gets to decide if what level you are and what you want to do. Having said that, you know, that's, I'm saying, if you really want to date and be in a relationship. Now, for some of us, maybe you're four or five or six, and you just really want to date and go out and have a good time and meet people. And that's fine too. You just got to know you get where you are, right? Whatever you're pulling in is likely a reflection of where you are. It's what you're putting out. It's the vibe you're putting out. It's the mentality you have about dating. It's whether or not you're open enough in your heart, whatever you're getting back in, in terms of dating and relationship, that's where you are. It's just a reflection of where you are. So just know that when you put yourself out there. So, all right. So coffee, I like my mug today. I got this. I don't have to start sharing you. Like I have a lot of mugs with words on them. If anybody knows where to get cool mugs, I like cool coffee mugs. Uh, inspiring coffee mugs. Um, this a uh, little bit of inspiration came from Mission Impossible. I think three or four one of the mission impossibles um and there's this one scene where these two guys are beating each other up so they can beat up um tom cruise and finally one of the guys yells at the other guy after they've hit each other like 17 times on accident trying to fight for the chance to beat up this other guy looks at him and goes ah, yes. and he yeah yeah and then ends up hitting him again anyway by accident. It's hilarious. So anyway, my daughter and I just thought the scene was so hilarious. I went out and I got us mugs going, I got this. It was funny. All right. So that's where my mug comes from. Enjoying my energy focused coffee with my ginseng and mushroom and, and B12 vitamins. Um, it's got a little bit of cinnamon in it. And I added a touch of vanilla. I use soy milk creamer. That's what I'm drinking this morning. All right. So. I would love to know questions um, about a couple of questions here. What do you guys think about dating during the holidays um, if you are dating after divorce? So if there's anybody here who got divorced during the holidays, I would love to hear from you because uh, I'm imagining if this is the time you're first separated, you probably didn't want to date. Now, that's not everybody. I know some people that you know their wife or husband moved out at the beginning of the week and by the weekend they were at the bar and out there putting themselves out there they just and i i, I know it wasn't to find a relationship it, they were numbing out and all that other stuff but they didn't wait is my point they didn't wait to date they just went out there did what they were going to do and just kept it pushing um i know some people I find this is more, this is me personally. I'm not saying this is statistically true. I'd have to look up the statistics on this, which will make a good assignment for me. And I'll post something on this. I find that men marry, seem to marry quicker than women, um, at least the men that I know. So this is anecdotal. I don't have any stats on this. As I said, a lot of the men I know got married super quick. Like they were not without, I mean, like very quick within a couple of years, they found another wife, even if their relationship was a long-term marriage um, and they broke up with somebody after 20 years, within another couple of years, they were remarried again um, to somebody um, or engaged. Um, and then some of them even got married. So that's, that's of the people that I know and interact with. I'm not saying that that's true. It'd be a good stat to find out. So I'd love to know what do people think about that, about how quick what's a, a a period now i've heard it said that if you if you 
however long you were in a marriage is the waiting period. I don't know if that, I've heard that said a bunch of different times over the years. I don't know if that's true. I think that if you do your work, your healing work, I think you can be in a relationship with somebody when you feel like I said, you're at that seven. I'm open, I'm available. I'm willing to trust and engage with men. I'm really to, I'm willing to not have a bunch of stereotypes where all men are this and all men are that and blah, blah, blah. I'm really open and available emotionally, physically, mentally, and I'm willing to do my work. Like if there are gaps, I'm willing to do my work with the person and on myself, like in that vein. Then I think if that's the case, um, you know, then, then that's fine. But there are other people who went out they had no interest in doing work. They were really, I know some people who were, who dated to punish the opposite sex. Um, they felt hurt and they were going to make people pay until they got over it. I know people who dated because they couldn't be alone. Uh, they didn't, they didn't want to be alone at all. They couldn't bear coming home to an empty house. They couldn't bear being alone by themselves. Um, I do, knew people who dated for that reason. I know people who dated for, that's just what they thought they should do in terms of they they're they're at an age where they want to be in a relationship provided for cared for they need a father for their children or a mother for their children and so it became like um almost transactional i'm looking to fill some shoes or fill a role like i'm like almost like hiring somebody and if i pick a wife then i get all the other perks or if i pick a husband i get all the these other perks in with the relationship and then i'll feel secure cuz a lot of people it's the security of having the double income, having a backup with the kids, having a, a, a role model for the children, having somebody who can, like there's there's a lot that goes with that. So it it runs the gambit. Um, people are choosing, they're choosing to get in where they're fit in, fit in. But today I'm really talking about if you want to have a real relationship and you are ready to date, uh, and you're available, like you're at that level seven, like I talked about earlier, and you're ready to date. The important thing is to start getting yourself the holidays. Or really what I want to say is the holidays is a great time to do that. People are festive. You're being invited out. You're likely being invited out by people you know, or doing events and activities you love. For many of us, the season gets us into a better mood. And so when you're out there, you are way more attractive. You're just way more attractive. You're enjoying yourself. You're with people you know and love. So you're relaxed. Your guard is not up. Um, you're doing activities you love. It's a festive season. Most people, they love the holiday. I like the holiday season anyway. It's festive. And so you're enjoying yourself. With that, typically, you're just more attractive. You look positive. You look like you're having fun you're putting yourself out there. It's an easy leap to engage with different people in different scenarios and you don't have to work hard and you're meeting people face to face. So I'm not poo-pooing getting online or any other methods of matchmaking and all that. I love all those. I think they're great. However, during this time of year, there's more activities, events, and opportunities to just be among the living, which I think is absolutely wonderful and healthy for you if you're ready. Now, if you're, if you're fresh off, you know, the divorce train, the ink isn't even dry, or you're recently separated, or you, you can feel emotionally like this is actually depressing for you. There was, there were, I think that first holiday. And I think because I, how, how my transition happened is I moved solo late summer, early fall. So this first holiday was hard. I was like only three or four months out. It wasn't like I did it in January. I was like three or four, not even three months. It was, it was hard. So I was uninterested. I did not want to go to parties. I did not want to go to events. I did not want to do anything. I was so focused on keeping my family intact. And my daughter was, she was an infant. She was maybe 18 months. She was, she was, she was probably two, going on two years. Uh, her birthday is in December. So she was going on two years. So, and she was the youngest grandchild. Every set of grandparents wanted her and access. So for me, it was really about how do I keep a sense of continuity in my family 
with my daughter. So she feels like she still has family, even at that young age. And she sees the people and we create new traditions and blah, 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 blah. Like I was really focused on that. So dating was not, I was like not interested, totally not there. I think subsequent Christmases, I think I've shared with you guys, it took me a really long time to go on that cycle. Uh, to get ready for dating. However, having said that, everybody's process is different. I'm not saying that there's a particular length of time. That stat that I quoted earlier, that's what I've heard said. I don't know that that's true. Um, but if you're ready and you're out there, the holidays is a really great time to do it because a lot of the activities you're going to be invited to are from family and friends who invite other family and friends. Um, or there's just other opportunities for you to do stuff solo with other people and really connect to other people. One of the things that I did find interesting is um, if you have family and friends that have big parties, that's a really great opportunity because they're inviting a mix of people. But if you have family and friends that have intimate parties and I'm more of an, you know, I'm an, I, it doesn't seem like it, but I am an introvert. So I prefer intimacy over large gatherings. I would rather go to an event that had 10 couples or, or 10 girlfriends that I know and love really deeply than to go to a party with a hundred people. Like that's just me. So most of the things I was being invited to was very, very intimate. And there weren't any single people there because we, I, they were friends. And so everybody there was already coupled up and I might be the only single person there. Well, there wasn't any other single person. We were the first in our group to be married and the first to be divorced. So we were trailblazers in both sense. <laughs> both sets of the word. So anyway, so I share this with you um, to say, um, you know, you need to, um, you need to you need to think about the type of events that you want to go to if you want to get out and date. So in my case, going to stuff with friends wasn't going to work out for me because they were mostly intimate gatherings. Most of the people weren't single. It was like me. And because it was so intimate, it was likely that um, my former partner was going to be there. And then I had to think about that. And we were always good with that. That was like not an issue. He would come, I would come, it was not an issue. Um, it, it was never a thing. But if you're there and you want to get out and meet people, eh, not so much, right? So think about activities you can do where you get to mingle. Cocktail parties, events where you buy the VIP ticket and you get to mingle with the people before. Um, think of things that you love to do that put you out there where you're really connecting with people face to face. It is a great practice if you're just getting started with dating after divorce to just reconnect, learn how to flirt. Again, I had to like guys it, it, jokingly I was like that maybe that's what killed my marriage. Anyway, <laughs> um jokingly, not so jokingly, but I mean, I you know, I hope if you're married and you're watching this, you're still flirting with your your husband or your wife. I hope you are. But I, it, it, when I went back to dating, I mean, I hadn't really flirted, flirted in years. I mean, we flirted and joked, but it was more like inside jokes and flirting um, to like actually flirt with intent, like to be amorous and all that. I hadn't done that in years. So it was like, you know, you're a little rusty. You're like, am I doing this right? Is he getting my messages? Uh, uh, I don't know. And it was, I, I'm sure I was awkward or I would really like somebody and not flirt at all. I was all in my head about talking to him and making sure I was making a good impression. And he thought I was a good woman and the kind of woman I was. So I wouldn't be giving off whatever I thought I might be giving off and like desperate one night stand, blah, 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 blah. Like I'm not that woman. I want to make sure, but that was in my head. So probably I wasn't connecting with these people very well. And again, in the beginning, the results were like all over the board. You got the crazies you get, and it's because I wasn't clear. So, but it's an excellent time for you to be out, for you to practice. It's an excellent time for you to just enjoy your life. I think a lot of it was, I, I was that whole first year or 18 months. I just, I didn't go out much. I didn't do much. I was really focused on healing and making sure that I was taking care of my daughter. And again, family continuity was what was important to me at that time. So finally, when I got out, it was great. It was great to be out among the living. And then you start practicing and then you, you start flirting and then you, and, and start enjoying the company of men or women again. And then you go, okay, I think I'm ready or I'm not ready or I, you know, wherever you are. I think there comes a point where you must decide in dating what kind of dating life you want to have. 
am I dating for fun, entertainment, relationship, marriage, you know, whatever, run the gamut, sex, whatever, whatever you're dating for. But you need to be clear about what it is you are dating to achieve. Because when you're not, it's like casting a wide net out there and you just pull in all the the haul, the fish, and you got, you know, some some mackerel, some trout, some crabs, some eel, some, you know, you got whatever you got because you're taking, you're casting a wide net and you're just getting anything in. Dating is exactly the same way. You have to be super clear about what you want so that you're not just pulling in anything. And then you're like, I don't understand why this guy or this woman is in my life. Why, why I'm not even that kind of person. I don't even understand how we even connected. How do we get here? I love when Chris Rock says that. How did we get here? Right. So that was, that's uh, kind of my, my thought. So I wanted to give you a couple, some do's and some don'ts for this time of year around dating. My two cents, best practices, things for you to think about if you're putting yourself out there again. All right. We're going to start with the don'ts and then we'll go to the do's. All right. All right, don't look for someone to complete you. I know people like, okay, that's highly romantic and people talk about this. You're not looking for a completion. But I think a lot of people do, especially after divorce, because you start doing opposite man or opposite woman. Whatever your husband wasn't, whatever your wife wasn't, you want new person to be that so that you feel complete. So if they were crappy with money, What would make you feel secure is somebody that's good with money. That's completion. If you're good with money, you don't really care if they're good with money or not. You will care from a, I'm not taking on anybody else's debt. And I need somebody who's conscious about money, but it won't, you won't be like, well, they have to make X amount of dollars and they have to have this and they have to have that. And if they're not a millionaire, own their own business, making above six, like we get into this nitty gritty criteria seeking. When you're looking for completion, which by the way, that's another sign if you're on your continuum, you are not a seven. If you're looking for somebody to fill in like, like um, to, to complete the pieces of you that are incomplete that aren't well, you do want somebody that's a compliment to you, but you are not looking for somebody to be like, oh, well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a night owl. I want somebody that's a morning person. You know, like, I, you know, I, I don't like this. I want somebody that really loves that so that you don't have to do it. You don't get to pick a person to make up for the things that are your perceived shortcomings. There are things about you that if you're not good at, get good at them. Then it doesn't matter if he has it or not. And then you're really evaluating the person based on their character, not their resume. Resume relationships don't work person could have every single thing you could possibly want in the universe and a bunch of stuff you never asked for and still be the wrong person for you because their character is not aligned with you. Their values are not aligned with what you want. Their resume is impeccable. They make whatever you say, have the kind of house and the car and the family and the pedigree or whatever is on your list. But if their character isn't aligned with yours and their values aren't aligned with yours and um, they are not the kind of like the, the way they fit in, like they, they won't fit into your life. And then you got a great resume guy. They look great on paper. And then there's no chemistry, no connection, no shared values, nothing. You don't parent well, you don't approach life the same way. Nothing. You got nothing. All right. So don't look for completion, complete yourself. And then you can look for your compliment. All right. Don't rush the process. Don't rush the process. And the process I'm talking about is the courtship process. Everybody wants to, and I have been guilty of this, so I'm not like no shade throwing here at all. I just want to be, get to the relationship. I want to like hurry up with the courtship and be in this declared committed thing so I can take him to the family events and say, this is my man or whatever title you guys like to use. My man, my lady my boyfriend, my girlfriend, I don't know if we're at a certain point, what, at what point in life, this is a great question. Do you stop calling people, your boyfriend or girlfriend? It's like, how old do you have to be when it's like, 
this is not, I don't have boyfriends. I'm not a teenager anymore. This is my man, my king, my lover. I don't know. I'd love to know. That's a great question. Put your answer in the comments. And I'd love to know what men and women, what do you refer to the person as when you introduce them? And that's actually important, but that's a topic for another time. So back to my point, don't rush the process. We were so in a hurry to just complete the courtship and make a declaration around, let's be in this relationship, whatever we want to call it, that you rush the process and you get what you get. You're, why are you in a hurry? In a hurry for what? For a title? For a commitment to somebody you don't know? You know, wh why? Why are you in a hurry? Enjoy the courtship. Take your time. You know, I'm not saying you guys should be dating for a year before you figure out that you don't, you know, you, you want to be together. Um, but think about not forcing something, but allowing something to evolve naturally where it just makes sense because of how you are engaging with the person that you become a couple. It makes sense. And that comes from not rushing. You're not forcing anything. You're not in a hurry to cross some arbitrary finish line. Some of us got married that way. That's what we did in our marriage. That's why we're divorced. Don't do this the second time around. Enjoy the courtship. Enjoy the person. Get to know their character. Get to see if your values are aligned. Know them beyond their resume and see what evolves. And if it's meant to be, it's going to evolve like naturally. It'll feel right for both of you. It'll just feel right. All right. Don't get mad at men or women, whichever if you're a man watching this, or, but don't get mad at men for being men. And don't get mad at women for being women. Here's what I mean by this. Men are going to want to have sex with you. Do not get mad at them or say they're only after one thing. They may be after that thing, sex, but that's because they're men. You can't get mad at them for being men. Now, how they handle that, I get it. You don't want somebody who's rude or crass or pressuring you into something that you don't want to do, obviously, right? But you can't get upset with him if he wants to make love to you. That's a part of their makeup. He, he wouldn't be talking to you if he didn't want to make love with you. He's a man, baby. He's a man. Like, don't get mad. It's, it's how it is. Know that he is the gas. You are the brakes. You get to say no. You move at your comfort level. Disclose your comfort level. I'm comfortable with this, not that. I prefer this, not that. Disclose your comfort level and just keep it moving. But you can't get mad at the gender for being the gender. It's like you, men are hunters. They're going to want to pursue you. That's how they're wired. And it's how they've been taught in society. They're going to want to pursue you. Um, and that's a whole other subject about women pursuing men, whole other subject about how to go about that. Uh, so you can't get mad at them for being who they are. They are who they are. Like, it's like getting mad at them because of their anatomy. You want a man, you love men then love men, love men for the totality of what they bring to the table, not just because that's what you have to choose from, right? Just appreciate where they are. Same thing applies to women. Men are like, well, you know, women say one thing and do another. Women are very emotional. You can't get mad at women for being women. We are emotional creatures. We are more subtle and less direct in some instances. You can't get mad at women for being women. We do what we do. That's who we are. Men do what they do. It's who they are. Don't get mad. Understand and say yes or say yes to the things you want. Say no to the things you want. You don't want. Accept who they are and then just keep it moving. But don't get mad. So that's the thing. Don't get mad at men for being men. Don't get mad at women for being women. You will save yourself a lot of heartache. And if you have this thing that all men are dogs or all women are are bitches or all women are emotional, then who you think you're pulling in? Emotional, crazy women that validate your experience or dog men that validate your experience. That's what you pull in. You That's where you are. So you're going to pull in where you are. If you just go, I appreciate men for being men and I get to say no to things I don't want to do. That's it. All right. Don't compare new guy to your ex. 
or talk about your ex on dates. So one of the things that we do, this is what I talked about before, opposite guy. Whatever your ex was, you want the opposite of that. If he was a workaholic, I don't want any guy to work He needs to work a nine to five and come home and support me with whatever it is, you know, kids, I want to have a family or whatever it is. But that comes with consequences. Guys that have nine to five jobs, very you know, stickler or sticklers for that. Many of those jobs, that many of those kinds of jobs are not jobs where there's a lot of um, career mobility or ambition. So you got to do that. You, then you can't get mad at him. Well, he has nine to five, but he's not ambitious. He doesn't want to go anywhere. Well, you wanted a guy with a nine to five. He has a nine to five. He's home every night to support you. It, it, it Sometimes those things don't fall into the same container. And what you're doing is overcorrecting for something that he didn't even do. There are plenty of men who work a nine to five, who are ambitious, or men that work less than that, who are ambitious, that have their own business, men that are career oriented, very ambitious, and still very family oriented and support the guy. Don't compare new guy to old guy. Don't compare new woman to, to old woman. They are two different people. They have two different sets of life experience. You look at the person based on, like I said, their character, their values, and if they fit with what you want. If they do, great, keep it pushing. If they don't, great, keep it pushing. It's like the same thing. But don't compare and contrast them. You're going to end up down some rabbit hole and that it and the fact that you're doing that tells me you're not at level seven, which means you're not over it. You're not over them. You're not over it. You're not over your divorce because all you're trying to do is like, I don't want to repeat the same mistakes. Well, if you're a healed person, you won't repeat the same mistakes. You're not that person anymore. The things that made you choose your former spouse are healed. You're aware of them. You won't pick the same type of person because you're not the same type of person. You have different criteria, different standards. But if you are evaluating new person against old person, then you don't believe you have the ability in yourself to navigate relationships. And so what you're doing is creating a list to make sure if it was on my ex's list, if that's how he was, I don't want this guy to have that because I can't deal with that. People are people. There's always going to be something on the list that was from the other guy because they're humans, right? We're not all so different. There's always going to be something on those where there's overlap. If you're whole and healed, you will know it, see it, own it, deal with it in a respectful way, regardless of your past. You're going to deal with it from new guy because it comes from a different place. It's got nothing to do with that. That's like if, if, if the old guy was late and he was cheating and the new guy is late one time, you're like, I don't date men that are late. It means they're like, you can't, <laughs> he's going to be late from time to time. Everybody's late from time to time. You can't like, completely outrule somebody because they have a characteristic from your old partner. And if you're looking to compare and contrast that, it's definitely indicative that you're not over your former partner and that there's work to do. All right. And then the number five, don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's okay to date people initially and not be in a hurry. And I'm saying date. I'm not talking about, everybody talks about like multi-dating. I didn't say multi-sexing, which in this day, like, Hey, I have, again, no judgment. As long as people are above board with their choices and their partner and honest about where they're coming from, do whatever. You're grown adults. I'm not trying to sanction anybody. And I have no judgment around what people choose to do. What I am saying is that multi-dating is not the same thing as being choosing to be intimate with all of these people. Get out, meet people, enjoy people, date different people. And enjoy, you're going to go on one date and what are you going to do? Like never go out again, never go out with another guy. If he asked you, it was one date. You might not have even liked him. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's a lot of pressure on yourself and on the person. Have a couple of dates, have, you know, date a few people. You can and see how it even feels to date. Do you even like to date? Do you even like this guy? You might have one date, not like the guy. And then you're like, well, it didn't work out. I'm not going to, you know, like there's that version. Then there's, well, I really like this guy and I'm looking forward to us getting together again. But maybe that takes a minute. 
people are working. Maybe he's traveling. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you've got events with the kids. So you don't get to get together with this because of your schedule for some time, but you still talk on the phone. Meanwhile, again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Somebody else asks you out, go out. It's lunch. It's coffee. It's dinner. It's a movie. You're not marrying any of these people. It's two hours of your time. Uh, At worst, it's 30 minutes if the date sucks. At best, it's two to three hours of a really good time with somebody who you might enjoy. You haven't made a commitment. You're still single. You're out there. You're, you are uh, looking for the right person. So don't like put all your eggs in one basket. It's like, well, I, I, I have to date this guy and finish dating, finish like people's like, I have to finish dating this guy until I start dating another guy. It was one date. You know, who knows when that relationship will finish? It might be over at the end of that date. You may never hear from him again. Even if you want to, maybe there was something that didn't click on his end and like, all right, we're not, I'm not getting the vibe that he's interested or what have you. And so I'm going to move on. It's okay to date and to enjoy other people in your life until you find the one, until you find the person that you really feel like, yeah, there's real, there's potential here and it's mutual. Then don't put all your eggs in one basket. Enjoy people. All right dating dues. All right. Set a dating intention. Here's where people, they, they date like a Uzi. They spray the area, or like I said, cast a wide net. So then you're just like scooping in all kinds of fish, all kinds of stuff. Right? So what you want to do is why am I dating? What is the purpose? Am I dating for fun? I just want to hang out with people. I want to start dating again. I want to flirt. I want to enjoy men. It's been a long time since I've been out. I don't really enjoy men like I used to. I want to. I want to enjoy men. I want to have a long-term relationship. I want to see if I can be in a relationship, like a short-term relationship. See if that I want to, um, I want to uh, have a fling. There's people that out there that want to have a fling. I want to have a long-term relationship. I want to get married. Your intention matters because once again, you're going to cast a wide net and you're just going to get a bunch of people in, right? And you got to own your intention. And that takes a level of health and and wholeness to be able to say to somebody, because I think it almost everybody that <laughs> I've been out with, what are you looking for? Everybody asks you, which is, I think, a very healthy question. What are you looking for? And you got to be able to look them in the eye and go, I'm really looking for someone that you know, is interested in a long-term relationship leading to marriage in the eye, not blinking. I'm really not ready for a relationship. I'm open to one, but I don't know that I'm ready. So I'm really dating to meet men and engage with people and have a good time. I really want to get married and I'm only interested in dating marriage-minded men. Uh, I'm really not sure what I'm looking for, but I want to have a good time. You got to own it. You got to own it. You, If you don't, you send constant mixed messages and then people just get on their own agenda. And then you're like a, uh, you got to walk on in their life instead of them being a main character in yours, right? When you're not clear, you end up accepting a bunch of people into your life because you're testing them to see what you want instead of, I know what I want and this person isn't it, swipe left or this person is it swipe right and i want to see where this goes but you don't have any clarity around that if you're just like meh and and if that's where you are meh then own that you know i'm just out here having a good time own it yeah that's what i that's where i am right now and fine and that tells the other person where you are and what you will accept, right? What you're like looking for. If they're marriage-minded, if he's looking for a partner, he may not want to continue unless he's really into you. He was, he's really looking for someone that's ready for a relationship. He may not, he may choose not to do that. Vice versa with men. This is why I said like, don't get mad at men for being men and women for being women. Everybody gets to choose. If she is relationship-minded, so what? There are plenty of women that aren't ready for that and that are happy to enjoy your company with no strings attached and no um, commitments on their part, right from you. 
The flip side is true too, ladies. There are plenty of men who are relationship minded and don't want to date women who aren't, right? Don't get mad at that too. It was like, I don't know what I said to him. You know, I told him I was open to anything. And he was like, I don't want a woman that's open to anything. I want a woman that's open to a relationship because that's where I am. Everybody gets to choose, but be intentional. Be intentional about what you want. All right. Make sure you are ready to meet your own intention. If I'm saying I'm marriage minded, would I marry me? Right. Do I feel like I'm the caliber of person that I would even marry? I ask this question sometimes of clients, of people out there, and they'll tell you, yeah, I wouldn't marry me right now. But they're looking for a husband. Be and that's where you get into that complimenting or completing, because what they're looking for is I want to get married, but they're, they're, what they're going to do is try to have the guy fill them where they're not fulfilled, like fill up, fill in the gaps. And I'm not saying you can't compliment. I think people should be complimentary, but I think it's a difference between you specifically sourcing somebody because you're like, I'm not good at this. And my man has to be good at this. That's a very different mentality than every day. I'm learning more and more about how to do this. And what's important to me is that I can learn from my man and I hope he's better at it than me. Right. There are some things where people pick my husband is great at everything, but the two of us together on this are horrible. And so we took a class and we learned together. It wasn't a strike out criteria. It was something that she, he is aware of, and they're not looking for someone to fulfill it for them, but they are looking for someone that compliments them in their pursuit of the thing, whether that's their better or they're less than and they get it together or they're the same and they learn together. It doesn't matter. But the point is there's not a lot of pressure on them to be something that you aren't in your own life. You have to be what you need to be for you, regardless of whatever somebody else is doing. So make sure you are ready to meet your own in dating intention, especially if it's a relationship intention. Would you want to be in a long-term relationship with you? Would you want to be married to you? Would you want to date you? Like, think about, it. I've been out with people that want to date for fun. That like, this is great. This is the first date I've had. You know, you're going to meet people like this because you just meet people. First date I've had since my divorce. I've been divorced two years and I finally decided it's the holidays. I wanted to get out, meet some new people and people are going to tell you their story. And then they're going to go into launching into talking about their ex. And what I, I wouldn't want to, I don't want to date that. If you're the person that's launching into talking about their ex and they're dating faux pas, would you want to date you? Really? I don't want to sit across from somebody who is really telling me about their marriage. Like, that's all we talk about. I went out with a guy once and he talked a lot about um, uh, his marriage. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't there. And eventually I just said to him, you know, you're not there. We're, we're not, you're not there. You have no space in your life for the kind of relationship you say you want because you're incomplete with this. And that's that. That was that. That was the end of that. Right. Great guy. Not there. Right. So that's the point. That's the point. All right. Do take your time. What are you rushing for? What is the hurry? There is no hurry. I think if it's right, uh, I just read um, um, one of my favorite dating coaches, um, DM Woods, he got married in less than a year, but he was incredibly intentional. That's actually what he coaches being intentional, dating intentionally. He was looking for a woman. So that cycle got shorter. He wasn't rushing, but he was very conscious of how he was dating. So that cycle was shorter because it was right. It was right. He was ready and it was right. There wasn't any rushing. He wasn't in a hurry. He chose carefully, wisely, and followed his process to make sure he had the right woman. That's the point. You don't have to rush to a finish line when it's right. It's just right. There's no pressure, no conniving, no convincing, no cajoling, no commanding, none of that. It's You're not doing any of that. It's just right. It works out. You don't have to rush to a finish line. So don't rush. Take the do is take your time. The last thing you want is to end up in a committed relationship that leads to a second marriage that you look back and go, yeah, I did the same. I rushed it. I shouldn't have rushed it. What am I in a hurry for? What do you, what are you in a hurry? What's the hurry? There is no hurry. 
All right. Number four, drop the judgment, not your standards. So if somebody is not ready for a relationship, if they're like, I'm just having a good time, don't judge them. Just say no, don't go out with them again. My standard is, uh, you know, I'm looking for guys that are marriage minded. This guy was, you know, looking for a good time. Great. I hope you find one. I'm not it. That's it. That's it. My standard is I'm looking for a guy who is, who's, you know, wants to enjoy dating and, you know, is open to a good time and is more, I'm not ready for a relationship. This guy is looking for, you know, a relationship. Great. I doubt he's going to want to date me, right? He, we don't want the same things. Look at the, the gap here. We don't want the same things. He's probably not going to call me again. Great. Move on. You don't have to raise or lower your standards to meet the other person's standards and don't, but don't judge them for them. He gets to want to have, you know, no commitment relationships and you get to want to have a relationship and vice versa. No judgment. Just, these are my standards. This is where I am. This is what I want. And I'm going to compromise and you don't have to be mad or irritated or whatever. Now, people do misrepresent themselves from time to time. I don't encourage or agree with that. Just be honest. I don't know why. And I've, I I used to be, you guys, and some of you may or may not know this. I used to be a dating coach. And I used to coach men all the time. For everything you think you want, there's a woman who wants the same thing. You do not have to lie. I know these women. I've met these women. Women talk. You know, for a lot of women, our programming is it's unseemingly to own those desires, but that's changing in the dating world. You don't have to pretend you want something you don't. Just be straight up. This is where I am right now. She gets to choose if that's where she is and she's okay with it. Or she might just be like, I'm okay with it. I, like you got same thing with ladies. You don't have to pretend because it's unseemingly. We're adults here. Have an honest conversation about what you want. Don't judge people for where they are and what they want, especially if they're being honest. How will we change the conversation around divorce and relationship if we can't be honest and accept people for where they are? Drop the judgment and keep your standards. All right. And the last one, enjoy yourself. Have fun. Do enjoy yourself. Do have fun. Go out. Have a good time. Enjoy being in communion with somebody else. Enjoy. Laugh. Have fun. Make it fun. When I started dating, I had one premise, no matter what. Even if he wasn't the guy and I wasn't his girl, we were going to have a great time on the date. And we may never see each other again, but it won't be like, oh, God, that was like two hours of my life. I won't get back. I had a great time, even when they weren't the one. And it was just fun. I committed to myself. I'm going to have a great time no matter what. So make it fun. All right. So do's set an intention. Make sure you are ready to meet your own intention. Would you date you? Number three, take your time. Number four, drop the judgment, not your standards. And number five, enjoy yourself, have fun. Here are the don'ts. Look for completion. Don't look for completion. Don't look for completion. Don't look for opposite guy. Whatever your ex was, this person is the opposite. Don't rush your process. Don't rush. There's no finish line you're trying to cross. Don't get mad at men for being men and women for being women. Don't get mad. Accept. This is how we're wired. This is our biology. Just deal with it with integrity. Don't compare your new guy to old guy. Would you want to be compared to old girl or old guy? If you don't want to be compared, don't compare somebody else. That's number four. And number five, don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's okay to date multiple people or to date for a long cycle. It's okay. You do not have to meet and marry the first person out the gate. It's okay to date for a while. All right. So would love to know what you thought about this. If this was helpful, if this was supportive, if this would support somebody in your life, shoot it over to them. Um, send it to them. Let them know these are some great tips for them on dating. These are great tips to date if you're just single and re-entering the dating world. But if you're dating during the holidays and you're divorced, these are 
I would say some of my top tips, best practices for you to get re-engaged and get yourself back out there in a healthy and whole way. And the real key is, as I said at the beginning, try to get yourself to a, a healthier level where you're more whole than not, because the challenge is you do yourself a disservice by not really being available for the dating scene. If you're not really ready, then you're not available. And then the results will be the result. And then you also do a disservice to the person because unfortunately you are practicing or your issues or working out your issues on them. And that's really not fair to them. All right. If this was helpful, again, share it out with somebody. I will see you next Saturday um, on Coffee Conversations and Coaching. I just saw somebody that joined. Hi, Jenny. I think I saw uh, Jenny join. Much love to you guys. And I will see you next Saturday. Have a great uh, day. Have a great weekend and have a sensational Saturday. Ciao.